So Fibonacci makes dress shoes that are built like sneakers, that look like dress shoes, perform like sneakers, look like dress shoes, comfort of sneakers, look like dress shoes, around the same price of a sneaker. So they sent us a couple pairs to cut in half to really see what makes this shoe so sneaker-ish. Because the idea is to combine the best of both worlds so you don't have to wear those uncomfortable dress shoes every single day in the office when you can be wearing a softer alternative. But when preparation for this video, there's a lot of really interesting things in this shoe that I've never really seen before. There's little wax bubbles that melt to keep your feet, feet warm or not feet cool. There's a layer of like gel on the inside and it's uh, also certified and backed up on the blockchain. And thanks to Fibonacci for sponsoring this video and sending us the shoes. One of the nice things about sponsored videos is it helps support the channel, but also sometimes you get discounts, which is the case with this. So if you want 15% off of Fibonacci's footwear, use the code ROSEANVIL at checkout. So now I'll start going through this thing and just figure out these shoes, because they're wild. So start. let's start with the leather first, because that's what we always do. So the main focus of this video is going to be the more chukka looking boot. They've got the dress shoe, it's built in the same way, but I just, I thought this might be a more interesting teardown because of the height and uh, I don't know, I wanted to do it. So the leather on this shoe differs from the, this sneaker. The, the, the regular dress shoe is a full grain leather, it's a nice leather. This one is a suede leather. So if you don't know what suede is, it's cut from that lower cross section of the, cro the, the cross, lower part of the cross section of the cross section of leather and it doesn't have that top layer of the grain which gives it a lot of its strength and durability. And to double check if it is a true suede, we wanted to cut a little slit out of it and see if we can put the magnifying glass on there and see if we can see a grain portion in there. And as you can see, there is no grain in there, so it is a true suede. So out of the two shoes, the regular dress shoe has the better leather there, and we put the caliper on it to see how thick it was. It was about 1.5 to 1.4 millimeters thick, which is right around what you'd expect for a sneaker or a dress shoe. And we also wanted to burn it to make sure it wasn't a really heavy plastic leather, or sometimes I get fooled and it's not even real leather, so we put the flame to it. And as you can see, it's pretty flame resistant. That's one of the benefits of suede. Not necessarily for a dress shoe, but it's kind of interesting, but it is real leather, and there's not, there's no sign of plastic being on top or infused into this leather. So it's for a suede, it's it's a decent suede. And we also ran all those same tests on this shoe just to kind of give you a, a well-rounded uh, perspective on all the leathers that they offer and same basically the same results. It's, it's a decent leather. It's not the highest quality leather, but it's far from the worst leather we've seen. I mean, we don't really have a suede ranking system, but suede is suede. It's it, out of all the fuzzy leathers, it's not the best. Um, my order is flesh out, uh, new buck or corrected grain and then suede because it doesn't have that top portion so will you have any issues with this leather being a dress shoe probably not I, it, it, if it were a work shoe or like a an athletic shoe would be a different story but there's a lot of suede like cf stead makes tons of suede on like some of the highest quality dress shoes so not too big of a deal and then if we look at the lining the lining is actually a pretty decent leather i was surprised at how good it is it's it does have a little bit of a finish on top a little bit of a pigment but it's not a ton and you can tell it's a, a grain leather even from this top cross section you can see how different colored that little grain portion is and you can see the natural pores on the inside so the lining leather is actually a better quality leather than the outer leather. Fairly thick, it's like 1.1 to 1.2 millimeters thick lining on the inside. And both of these leathers are chrome tanned, so you're gonna get plenty of wearability out of these. You know, if, if this if this shoe wasn't lined with a full grain leather or not lined at all, I'd have some serious complaints about them doing a, a suede leather upper that wasn't backed by anything. And then the regular shoe has that exact same lining as well. And then if you look deep inside the shoe, you can see that it does have a dedicated counter cover. And it's the, the perfect way to do a counter cover. So what they've done is they've taken that lining, they flipped it to the, the fuzzy side, basically the suede side, and used that as a counter cover because that's going to help grab your heel because these little fuzzies are a little bit more of a, a little more grippy on your heel so you don't get as much heel slip. And it's going to be really durable because it's leather rather than a fabric or a fake leather like a lot of shoes. So and I was really happy to see that because it's... That was, that's one thing that a lot of sneakers and a lot of shoes that are in this price range of like 150 you really skimp out on. And then if we go deeper inside, you can see it comes with a nice little insole. You know, insoles, there's, there's only so much to talk about with insoles. There's a lot of gimmicky stuff going on with insoles, but you can see it's topped with that same lining leather and this really interesting fabric that lines the vamp and the forefoot. And this is that wax thing I was telling you about. So this completely blew me away. We were gonna record this video and it's coming out late because after we 
after we really dug into the details, I was like, wait, there's wax bubbles on the inside of the shoe? Like, how is that possible? What is it for? You know, I was like very confused by it. You might be thinking right off the bat, well, if my foot heats up so much, it's gonna whack, the, the wax is gonna melt, is it gonna just go right into my sock? Well, I believe they're encapsulated. We'll run some tests and put it in the background to show you what it does when, it, when it's exposed to heat. So to give you as easy of an explanation as I can, so this is a NASA certified temperature regulating material. And the way that this works is according to the laws of physics, the temperature does not increase any further during the change of physical state from solid to liquid talking about the wax. Figuratively speaking, the thermal energy can be used to overcome the physical state of the wax because your natural body temperature heats up those little wax bubbles and melts it, which transfers the heat to melting the wax, which keeps your foot cool, which is completely insane. I've never heard of this in my entire life. And I don't know how I made it this far on the channel without hear hearing about this technology. And so does it actually work? Well, according to Fibonacci, it significantly reduces the user's heat peaks, considerably improved comfort and prevents sweat formation by up to 48%. And I'll put links to all the stuff that they referenced to, to the, that backs up their claims in the description so you guys can check it out. So the way we tested this fabric was with open flame and it just kept lighting on fire. And we couldn't really tell if it, the wax was actually melting and losing its little capsulated shape. So instead, after recording, we got the heat gun out and heated it up, took the temperature with a little temperature gun, heated up to 300 degrees, still no melting. So we really cranked that gun up, got it up to 400 degrees, and it still wasn't melting. It got to the point where this fabric started to brown and started to get really brittle. So the actual fabric was failing from heat before the actual wax capsules were. So it's more than likely, unless your feet get over 400 degrees in your shoes, you're not gonna have any wax melting anywhere and it seems to work pretty well. The next really interesting material is right underneath that lasting board. And it's a molded insert that consists of small silicone beads encapsulated in PU, so polyurethane. So it's a foam layer with a lot of little beads in it. And the idea with this would be to combine the attributes of the polyurethane foam, the squishiness, but the problem with polyurethane is it compresses over time. So those gel beads are there to help keep that uh, rebound and that, and the form of that ins insert while still being able to compress and still giving you extra comfort. So does it actually work? Does it give you some extra comfort? Yeah, it definitely gives you some extra comfort because it's super soft underneath your foot. And then if we move to the real midsole of this thing, you can see it on the sides. We were able to take a, a measurement of how hard this foam is and it's around 50 Shore. So it's a nice mid-range density foam. You know, it's not nearly as soft as some of the running shoes, but it's not nearly as hard as some of the other materials we've seen on the inside of shoes with like a harder rubbers up in the 80 to 70 shore A range. Then if we look at the outsole, you can see it's a, a rubber outsole and you can see the little Fibonacci sweet sequence on there, which is a nice touch with them being named Fibonacci. And it's a rubber outsole. It comes in at a 65 to 70 shore A, so a fairly, fairly grippy and hard rubber for an outsole. And I think they put a, a little bit harder rubber on there and they say it has a higher carbon content. And I think they, they can get away with that because of how many layers of foam and squishy are underneath your foot. And to really put all these materials to the test, we did the bar drop test on this to see how it performed. And a normal dress shoe, we just went to the thrift store, got a pair, it bounced up seven inches. Then we threw the Fibonacci on there and it bounced up 10 inches. So not only do you get a lot more rebound, but I think you also get a lot of comfort, and obviously you get a lot of comfort because it's all foam. So this is a fully cemented construction. So compared to the dress shoes that are a lot of times are good, you're welted or Blake stitched, this is a lot more like a sneaker where it's, it's cemented all together. The final thing that the, this shoe is so unique for other than how it's constructed is each one of these shoes receives a VE a -E chain, a VE chain, smart tag, which establishes its linkage between the physical product and the unique blockchain identity. And each unique digital identity provides a traceable over the life cycle of the product from manufacturing through consumer engagement on the blockchain. And you're asking the wrong guy about blockchains and all this kind of stuff. But the idea behind it is that you can scan the tag at any time, whether you bought it from someone else or it's brand new out of the box to show and prove that it is an authentic pair of shoes. And we've seen a bunch of different brands starting to roll this out, especially with the fakes market. Obviously there's not gonna be a lot of fakes out there of Fibonacci's. And I think it's really cool that Fibonacci, they didn't necessarily need to do that, but I think it's cool that these small brands are taking the steps that we wish some of these bigger brands were stepping, or <laughs> making. So pretty interesting, a lot of interesting technology. So let's cut these things in half and see what's on the inside and see, oh, oh. my camera stopped recording at 30 minutes and so I had to re-record that last little bit, but spoiler alert, I already cut them in half. So now let's cut them in half in the footage and I'll show you what's on the inside.
Okay, now we have them cut in half. So let's see what's inside. So now you can really see some of this stuff that I was trying to describe a little bit better and how these little bubbles are all the way through the vamp and the forefoot and how interesting this little structure on the inside of this white layer of that foam that's reinforced with the gel is. And you can see what they mean by it not being as compressible as these other, as like the polyurethane foam because I can pull this little piece out and you can see it's, it's, like, a, it's like a hardy gel. It's not like it's a foam or anything. And so I, I can see where they're coming from with the little, these little, the little, whoa, the little ball on the inside. It's going to compress a lot more times than a foam will before, because foam is just basically a million little teeny bubbles that compress, <laughs> that compress over and over. And whereas gel, it's a displacement compression. So instead of those cells compressing, the gel is displaced and spread out. And one thing that I didn't really notice about the shoe until we cut it in half is how low the drop is on the shoe. It's almost a zero drop shoe. For the most part, it's gonna feel like a sneaker underfoot because of how low the heel is on it. One of the questions I had before cutting it was, does the upper wrap underneath like a Blake stitch shoe or is it a strobel stitch like a sneaker? Well, this is wrapped underneath and cemented. So it's it's kind of, it is actually quite literally a hybrid between sneaker construction and dress shoes. And we've seen this in some of those white sneakers where they will do a similar construction that combines some of that dress feel and look with the sneaker construction. So overall, a very interesting shoe. I think if you're going for the comfort aspect, I think your money's well spent. You know, there's not a lot of sneakers out there doing it with this low of a drop, with this much unique technology on the inside, but is it worth the price? Well, if we compare it to a lot of the other sneakers that we've done in this price range, it seems like it's pretty on par. And for $150, you'll find a lot worse materials on a pair of Nikes or Adidas or any of these other brands that we've cut apart. So to me, comparing it to sneakers, it seems like it's well worth the money. Um, comparing it to dress shoes, I haven't, I've never really cut dress shoes apart, so it's hard to really say. But solely from this style of construction, it seems like it's, it's money well spent. If you're looking for a nice, lightweight, comfortable, low drop uh, dress shoe that you can wear anywhere, that has some really interesting technology in it. So check these guys out via the link in my description. These guys sponsoring these videos are the real lifeblood of this channel because it's, it's what allows us to upgrade equipment. It's what allows us to continue to grow and improve the business or the business and the, the channel, if I'm being honest. Go watch one of our one of my first videos. Actually don't because they're super embarrassing. But it's what helps this channel out. So thank you guys. Thanks for getting the Fibonacci and back to Mocktober and Matusa. So thank you guys. See ya.